being watched and heard already. <laughs> okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Santa Cruz Metro April. Pause for a moment. What month are we in? Woo! It's the end of April. April meeting. So welcome, everyone. Um, I would like to invite uh, Curtis to please do the safety announcement. Good morning, everybody. Curtis Moses, Safety and Security Risk Management Director. Uh, in the event of emergency, we have two means of egress for this particular facility. You'll exit out either one of these two doors and meet in the park a lot, where Donner and I will take a head count of those that attended the meeting. In the event of a medical emergency, I'm first day trained, and in the lobby, basically, there's a defibrillator, and I'll be the one that'll contact first responders. That concludes my safety contact today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. To ask uh, Donna to please call her. Director Brown? Here. Director Downing? Here. Director Dutra? Here. <laughs> Director Conan? Here. And Director Lind is absent today. Director McPherson? Here. Director Newsom? Present. Director Pigler? Here. Director Pierce Carter? Here. Director Rockin? Here. Direct, or ex officio Director Henderson? Here. And ex officio Director Northcott? And we have quorum. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. So just a couple of announcements. Uh, today's meeting is being broadcast by Community Television of Santa Cruz County. And we are supposed to have an interpreter. So if you are there online, if you can identify yourself. May not. Okay. We do not have an interpreter for today. So apologies for that. Um, Next time. All right, I'll invite any board of directors who would wish to make a comment. Okay. It's the appropriate time to talk about the grant that was received, or is there something on the agenda? That I know that our CEO is going to speak to in his report, but please. Okay, I can wait to that. Great. Right. All right, so we'll move on to oral communications. So this is your opportunity for those attending either here or virtually to speak on items that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone who'd like to make oral communication? Yeah. Online? <clears throat> Hi, this is Brian. Is that my... Q. Yes. Yes. Uh, hi, this is Brian Peoples from Trail Now. Um, congratulations, Santa Cruz Metro, on the new grant funds for the new e-buses. What a great win for Metro and our community. Um, Guy Preston's first term as the RTC Executive Director, he recommended to the okay. RTC Board the interim tra coastal trail plan based on his expertise in transportation project and systems. Mr. Preston understands the laws associated with rail making, reserving the publicly owned property as a transportation resource. When Mr. Preston recommended the interim trail years ago, I felt so bad for him because of the false claims made by Rory Camp, Ms. Clark, and other train advocates. They falsely claimed that their beach train would close. More humiliating was watching the RTC board not support Mr. Preston and listening to the false claims against Mr. Preston. These false claims carried over to Measure D elections, resulting in a distorted message on the community's desires for the coastal corridor. The fact is the public did not vote to move forward with a train on the corridor. We believe more accurate election results is the landslide victory defeat of former supervisor John Leopold, who was a big train advocate, approval of Measure L, where Capitola residents supported using the Capitola trestle for a trail, and 2016 Measure D tax, sales tax for widening Highway 1, investing in Metro, and building the coastal trail. Mr. Preston has offered to walk the corridor with RTC members to help inform them of the best approach to build the trail. Some have accepted his inv invitation to walk and heard of his personal recommendations. 
If you have not walked the corridor with Mr. Preston, please do and listen to his expertise. We find it frustrating and sad that RTC board members put false claims by private company over transit experts. Those of you who believe Measure B was a message to build the train, well, you got your $8 million study coming. Those who believe that the public wants to preserve the corridor, that's what rail banking is. Just like thousands of other core communities across the country have done. We do not need to keep the old tracks to preserve it for future transit. As stated by Mr. Preston, we asked Metro RTC members to listen to Mr. Preston's recommendations and not be deceived by private interests on how to best to use the corridor. We need to open the coastal corridor as a transportation resource today, and that can only be done effectively by moving forward with the interim coastal trail. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else online? Thank you, Transit. Okay. Oh, and um, let me just take a moment to say we do have an interpreter online. Mr. Um, Hussard Joseph is online. So if anyone needs Spanish interpretation, please let us know. Um, maybe we could have it translated to Spanish. Um, did we make that announcement? Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me now? One moment, Lonnie. We're going to just ask Mr. Hussar Joseph if he could make the announcement that he's available for Spanish interpretation. Maybe we'll have um, Equity Transit make their. Um, yes. Oh, there's, is there? Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Joseph, if you can just announce that you are available for Spanish interpretation in Spanish. Mr. Joseph, can you hear us? We've un no. unmuted you. Okay, let's um, let's move on to Equity Transit's public comment and see if we can get this working after that. Okay, please, Equity Transit. Good morning. This is Lonnie Faulkner uh, with Equity Transit, and on behalf of Equity Transit and our community members we represent and uh, our priority to protect our environment, we extend a deep appreciation to Michael Tree and his visionary leadership, Wanda Moo's grant writing, uh, Commissioner Kalantari Johnson's leadership, and the work of the entire Metro team on the amazing TERSIP grants won uh, towards making more robust our public transit systems and begin to provide affordable housing for our Metro workforce. We do deeply appreciate all the work that your entire team has done and congratulate you on these efforts. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, let's see. Great, please. Hello. Hi, my name is Jonathan Gorn. I'm a UCSC student. I just want to express the fact that I believe there needs to be more service to campus. Um, the number 15 leaving at 9.15 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, about three or four times now, it skipped like three or four stops just because the bus is full. And that means there's students that can't get to campus. And a lot of students depend on the bus to get to campus. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Any others? No, no more. Okay. Thank you. Oh, we can't get him to. Okay. All right. Okay. Looks like there are no more oral communication, and unfortunately, we can't get um, Mr. Joseph's microphone working. So, but <laughs> supposing that we have Spanish interpretation, if needed, we'll we'll try to make that work. All right, moving on to labor organization communication. 
Hello, board. Good morning. My name is Jordan Vasconis, and I'm the SDA chapter president for SDA Factory One. Um, part of my job as a in my executive role is to unfortunately relay some um, potentially negative uh, stuff I hear around the agency. And so today, today I just wanted to mention um, that there are some retention problems that we have with employees, um, both new employees and existing employees. And while some departments have uh, made efforts to address this problem, I've, um, I can say that I wish there some of the other departments took more of an initiative to reach out to me to try to come up with some sort of resolution to uh, said retention problems. And so um, while we do have contract negotiations coming up and uh, we're going to be pitching language to help kind of address it moving forward, I still think that there are problems that need to be solved in the short term. And so I ask for if any board members want to reach out to me to get more uh, details on this, um, please reach out. But um, negativity aside, I just want to say that uh, the contract negotiations look to be positive so far, and I'm um, excited to go into that next week on Tuesday. Um, and then besides that, I'm just really happy to see the uh, deployment of the Clever Devices uh, ITS project. So I work uh, directly with that, as does my uh, director, Isaac. And so I'm really happy to be um, rolling out new technology on the buses that will have a direct impact for the customers out in the field. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, James Sandoval here, uh, General Chairperson of Smart Local 23, who represents the bus and paratransit drivers here at Metro. And I echo some of the same concerns with uh, Jordan from SEIU, our sisters brothers um, from SEIU, about the retention problems. Um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we do have an opportunity with this contract negotiations to help address some of these retention problems. And I will say many of our members are waiting to see what this contract is going to be like before they make the decision whether they're going to move on or even retire. So this contract is a really big deal, and I'm hoping that we could secure a deal that would help solidify more recruitment and retention. And on a positive note as well, I do want to say that so far we've been moving along extremely smooth. Uh, we've had maybe five sessions so far, and we're almost done with all the non-economic stuff. We're about to get into the like, econ economic stuff. And we have about six meetings scheduled. So it looks like we're uh, both sides are really looking to try to get a deal done. And I do want to thank Michael. He was there for the first meeting where we started setting up the ground rules. He expressed his interest and his positive attitude for getting a deal done too. He gave his, you know, the, the, the authority to the bargaining team that he has to make this deal. And things have been running way smoother than the 2019 <clears throat> negotiations that we had. So I just want to make sure that every board member knows it's going really well. And also with the event, the funny thing is too, at the event that we had with the grants and the funding that we got, you know, seeing some of you there too, it feels like we haven't seen each other in a while and we want to know what's going on. But I just got to say that's, that, that speaks to how we've been dealing with stuff at Metro. We don't need to come to you for every single problem now. You know, it'd be still cool to, you know, meet and catch up after a while, but that's just speaking to the leadership that we've had right now with Michael Tree and his, his management team. Every bump that we've had on the road, we've been able to address it at the lowest level. So um, I'm extremely excited and I'm you know, looking forward to the new contract every year. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sandoval. So quick question. Um, can you remind me or anybody else who's wondering uh, the positions that both SEIU and SMART represent and the current status of the contract, when it expires, and should there not be a extension, would it go in the status quo? What's the what would what are the possibilities? What roads could we go down here? Does, does anybody did anybody speak to those things, or is that too much of the weeds to, to address right now? Hi, good morning, Don for me, HR director. Um, so our current contracts expire June thirtieth of this year. Um, we're all very positive that we will have uh, an agreement by then and a new contract starting on July 1st. Um, if not, um, what happened before is the contract extended out like a couple of weeks when we went late. Um, but we don't anticipate that happening. We anticipate, you know, making a deal and closing everything on time. Um, as far as the representation, if you guys want to tell it or I can tell it. 
Sure. You want to say, okay. <laughs> Did you have any other questions about the contract or? Uh, no, I just, just kind of keep trying to get some details around. It. Like how? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. So our union smart local 23 represents all the bus drivers okay. and all the paratransit drivers, or actually I would say all of staff at Paracruz and um, SEIU pretty much represents all of the rest of um, staff, mechanics, fleet, bus. So yeah, right. thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, you have three subunits uh, that represent different groups of members. So it's all one union, but they actually have subunits that represent different parts of the other workers other than the drivers and the fair. Our mechanics and uh, the contract administrator is one of the ones that comes Thanks. Service, Thank service workers. Thank you for the question. All right, we're going to move on to consent agenda, and that's items 9.1 through mm -hmm. 9. 9 9.10. Um, are there any items on consent that uh, commissioner and board members have um, questions on or that want to be pulled? Okay, so I'll go out to public comment on consent 9.1 to 9.10. Anyone online? Okay, then I'll come back to the board. Thank Second. you. I think I got uh, Mike and Kristen, um, and we'll do the roll call vote. Yes. Uh, Director Brown. Aye. Director Downing. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. Director McPherson. Aye. Director Newsom. Aye. Director Pegler. Aye. Director P. Rose Carter. Aye. And Director Rocket. Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our regular agenda. Item 10 is our longevity award. We have one longevity award this year, um, excuse me, today. Um, and that is Mr. Noah Vessor for 15 years of his service. So thank you. Tenemos una de agenda. Tenemos el señor hoy. Y la agenda en el día de hoy. Y gracias. Yeah, we're getting our translation. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Noah Vassour, for your years of service. I believe he's not able to attend either online or in person, but let's give him a round of applause. Okay, right. item 11 is presentation of safety certificate of achievement for third quarter ending March 31st, Mr. Curtis Moses. Good afternoon, good morning. Um, just want to kind of bring to, especially with the new board members, that the Federal Transit Agency uh, requires that transit agencies around the country uh, require that basically uh, safety departments recognize and promote safety throughout a transit agency. And I'm pleased to announce that this quarter, the Department of Customer Service has received this quarter's safety award for safety promotion. This department uh, on a consistent basis are what we consider frontline employees. These employees every day uh, look out for the transit agency, the public riders, and as well as our employees. Uh, there's no point in time during the day that they don't reach out to the safety department uh, regarding any particular hazards or any type of safety concerns, whether it be the public. Uh, they contact me directly, and we look into basically mitigating for everybody that is of concern, including the transit agency. So once again, for this quarter, uh, the department is led by Rena, and that's who we recognize for this quarter uh, for the safety promotion. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Moving on to item 12, and that is consideration of adoption of the California Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act and introduction of the informal bidding ordinance. Ms. Sherman. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so this looks really complicated and it is a bit complicated, but the whole point of it is to help procurement staff simplify matters for small value public works contracts. So under Metro's enabling legislation, any public works contract over $10,000, you have to go through a really complicated sealed bid process. A lot of law and case law comes in to evaluating those bids, and you have traditionally had trouble getting bids. 
for low value contracts uh, because the sealed bid process is super complicated, it's sophisticated, and there are a lot of forms to fill out. And if you make a mistake, if it's a material mistake under the law, you have to reject that bid. And so for smaller companies who are bidding on, you know, a $20,000 project, it's a lot of work for that company to go through. So you often have trouble with incomplete bids, no bids, you have to rebid, you have to reject bids. So for several years now, I've wanted, I've had this on the list of things to help Metro do, and we've done this for a bunch of agencies. And by becoming, I'm going to call it Cupka, so we don't have to use the entire name of the um, act. By becoming subject to Cupka, you have this uh, zero to sixty thousand dollar threshold where you can just pick up the phone and get quotes. You don't have to do a complicated sealed bid process. And under the law, that's like a hundred percent fine. So I think. <laughs> Staff thinks that that's going to be really helpful for these small value public works projects. And then in between 60 and 200, there are different processes that, that apply. It's not, it's a little bit more formal, but it's not that super formal process. Until you hit 200,000 and over, that'd be the process that you're used to today, which is a competitive sealed bid process. So in order to become subject to CUPCA, if the board agrees that this is a good thing for the agency, uh, I'm asking you to adopt a resolution to become subject to CUPCA. We send that to the state. We have to introduce by title only an ordinance. So we just have to read that title. And then we would schedule a public hearing and a second reading of the ordinance. And I will present the, work, the full ordinance at that time for adoption. And that this public hearing and adoption of the ordinance would happen at the May meeting. We would publish a notice of the public hearing in the newspaper and you know, a couple places around in public, you know, bulletin boards. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. So we'll give more of the details when we see the actual agreement, but just in general terms. You take a bid over the phone. I'm going to do X for twenty thousand dollars. What's the lead? What are the legal ramifications of the cloud performance? Or how do you, you know, suppose the bid's got two parts to it, and one of them is dependent, which typically happens. Yeah, you know, we want you to do this, but then we want the options to do this B and C. And the person you come into B and C, and they don't deliver on the level you've already got them hooked. To, you're already paying them for part one, and part two. They can't do, and you need them to do it. Those kinds of questions. How do those get resolved if it's all done in a, a, a X dollars over the telephone phone call? Yeah, a, a couple ways. I mean, number one, there'd be a scope of work that staff would have, and we would have a contract. And in that contract, we would include this is you know what you're going to do, and this is how much we're going to pay you. You're going to still have to pay prevailing wages. You still have to comply with the law, you know, labor code requirements. Um, and if it's something the staff was worried about, you could get a performance bond. You know, that's another 1% on to the price approximately. Um, that would be passed to the agency. But, you know, you'll have your contractual provisions. So you're agreeing on, on a orally on a price. We're going to do this for $20,000 or $19,000. Then you're just, before you actually give them any money, there's going to be a contract that actually has specifics in it about what's what you're performing for, and that's what gets violated if they don't deliver what they said they were. Yeah. That answers my question. Thank you. I just had to imagine this, yeah, we'll come do that job for 20000 bucks. <laughs> and it's like, okay. yeah. And I, I might have kind of simplified a little bit, but you can email the scope of services. You know, we need this security gate replaced. We need this wall painted. This is what the, the you know, what sort of loose scope would be, and then you would target it out. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, take it out for public comment. Online? No? No. Okay, I'll bring it back for a motion. Susan. Okay, we got a motion and a second by Pegler and second by Watkins. We'll do roll call vote. Director Brown? Aye. Director Downey? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Director Colletary Johnson? Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. Director McPherson? Aye. Director Newsom? Aye. 
Director Pavlik. Aye. Director T. Rose Carter. Aye. Director Rocky. Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you. All right, so we'll see that in, in May at the next meeting. Okay, moving on to item 13, CEO report. Wow, that's quick compared to last month in four hours. <laughs> I was a rookie then. I'm dotted now. <laughs> Right. Well, I, uh, you know, it's been a really busy month, and uh, I've got kind of a little laundry list here of just things that have happened. So if you don't mind, I'll kind of cruise through them and uh, give you some updates on some projects. We'll certainly uh, at the end talk about the big award announcement, which has been pretty exciting. Um, I, I wanted to let the board know that uh, we have uh, six new operators this week who have gotten their license to the DMV. So getting close, probably just some more line training and then they'll be out on the road. And uh, we also have 22 new operators entering the new class that will be starting in May. So we're, we're about uh, 22 down. So with those two classes, you know, I, I imagine some will fall out, but with those two classes, we get the bulk of uh, our pre-COVID level of operators back. and. Even uh, more exciting to me, obviously, is uh, you know with that uh, class at class of 22, we'll have to be fully staffed on operating the contract there with UCSC and making sure that when the students come back in the fall, uh, they've got full service, full pre-COVID level service, and also 10 parts and classes uh, to help with that service. So I think it's a big deal and. Uh, Certainly wanted to recognize, you know, Don and her team with uh, marketing, uh, with Margo and the trainers for just working day and night. I mean, the goal was to be fully staffed by the end of the calendar year, and I think we're going to do that. Uh, but Don and Mike, for giving something you you had mentioned, you might have a. Um, yes, I just wanted to reiterate. So, as Michael said, we have 22 new operators, um, you know, getting ready to start in May, and I want to say thank you to the unions because. Um, they did a lot of help for us. Um, Brandon, I think in one day, went to like 15 or 16 places in one day and put up flyers for us and stuff. So I know that they're doing a lot of talking with their members and their members are out talking to people and I'm, I'm you know, the hire on bonus and the referral bonus, I'm sure all of that's helping. But, um, you know, sometimes we get siloed in our areas like, well, I'm just HR and I'm marketing and I'm this. But when we come together and we hear others' ideas, you know, they had a lot to offer uh, to us when we were doing our flyers and our and our hiring cards and things, things that maybe we don't think of. You, you do something for 20 years and you think you know it all, right? And then somebody else has another idea like, well, why don't we change this? Or, you know, they gave us a lot of ideas of how to reword something on a flyer or a catching, you know, a catchphrase or a catch word. Um, and can you come up with this so that we can, you know, this will be useful to talk to somebody that actually has driving experience as opposed to somebody that doesn't have any experience. So. All of these things that we don't think about. So thank you. I, you know, you guys have been a tremendous help for us. So thank you very much. So a couple of days after the last board meeting, we had the one right at a time kickoff event, the formal event. And uh, those of you who attended, it was, it was fun. It was, uh, uh, it was a great time to talk about the environment. And it was a great time to talk about Metro. And we had on display five of the six buses that, uh, that have been wrapped with, uh, you know, wildlife and landscape. So I just wanted to remind folks that that's uh, been kicked off. And uh, at that event, uh, the vendors provided uh, $40,000 to uh, the two nonprofits, uh, the Sanctuary and also the Bay of Life Fund. Uh, so that was a really nice to token from our vendors. And since uh, we have about $80,000 from vendors that uh, they're looking forward to providing to the to the sanctuary in the Bay of Lives. So that project has some momentum. The other piece of that was just riders getting the phone app and being able to log their trips and being able through Measure D and RTC to have a rewards program where they were contributing. And so we kicked that off and uh, I'll start reporting on that next month, how the reaction has been. And uh, we have a, a big campaign coming up with UCSC with students to get them on board, meeting with their student body president and others up on campus to, to kick that off and get it going. Um, interestingly enough, if you take Mass Transit Magazine, it's the premier magazine for public transit. I know you all have it on United Stand. <laughs> <laughs> but we're the cover story 
in uh, in April. It should be out. Uh, it's April May actually, so it should be out probably within a week. You'll see the whale tail bust with the ocean in the background, and then there's a really nice story in there on the goals of the agency and how we're moving forward and putting COVID in the rearview mirror. So uh, I'll make sure y'all get a, a link sent out and get a hard copy. Daniel's uh, got a lot of uh, extra copies coming. And I uh, just wanted to note, one of the contracts extensions uh, that you approved today was Marty Lang's uh, legal contract for workers' comp. And as you may have noticed in the, in the staff report, she committed 5% of her contract value to be donated uh, to uh, these, these organizations. So that project is just, uh, you know what, it's, uh, it's kind of cutting edge. And I'm really grateful for Julie and her guidance on how to do that the right way. And uh, she's played a big part in that. And uh, just good things are coming with that project. Um, I won't mention much about the labor negotiations because we've talked about them a couple of times today. But from my vantage point, they're going well. And I'm looking to be involved in the economic packages as they're discussed. So, um, I just characterize them. I think uh, James is right, and the others who have spoken. I, I just foresee us getting a contract in place uh, before they expire. Um, I wanted to mention to you that uh, CALAC, which is the California Association for Coordinated Transportation, it's the largest transit association in California as far as number wise. They had their spring conference uh, a couple of weeks ago. And they recognized Metro for all of the things that had been done during the rain and the flooding events uh, about the rescue with the YMCA kids and their uh, staff uh, about uh, the rescue from various uh, homes. Uh, I think we did uh, 39 on the first rescue and 29 residents on the second rescue about the, you know, uh, uh, what has become 372 free bus passes for folks that have been stuck at the fairgrounds and getting them some mobility while they've been there. Uh, you know, the list goes on that the union, you know, smart and their leadership in getting blankets and uh, diapers and, you know, just critical items to the fairgrounds literally the night as people were showing up. So long story short, in their uh, awards assembly, with a couple hundred people in the room, they presented our agency the Above and Beyond Award, which was really a surprise for us. We didn't know it was coming, and uh, so I wanted to make sure that uh, you saw that. And uh, again, just a hats off to everybody who's played a big part in being a good community partner. Um, just a couple more things here. Uh, during the month, we had the groundbreaking for the Bus on Shoulder project, and uh, that was a fantastic groundbreaking. Uh, I think good things are to come out of that project for Metro and for multimodal transportation in that Highway 1 corridor. So it was fantastic to be there. And I know uh, board members spoke, I think Tony spoke, and, and uh, others were speaking there. So that's exciting to get that project kicked off. And uh, just a recognition that RTC has been pretty progressive. Every time we have asked for a, a cycle two or a cycle three grant out of that congested corridor program. They have also asked for uh, zero emission buses. So at that last grant award, we also received a couple of zero emission buses that were packaged. Um, got just a couple of other things. Stay with me. <laughs> Don't worry, we got plenty of time. So the 10 Arctic buses, it's going really well. Um, Eddie and Maintenance and Margo have just uh, worked magic with San Diego as well as Long Demo and setting that up. So they're still coming. They'll come early enough to where we can uh, basically package them, restrike them, and uh, get everything set up in them. Uh, so I'm excited for that. That's going to be game changing on the route serving the university. Uh, and then uh, the CAT ABL system is about 94% complete. So you're going to see that complete. And what that allows you to do, obviously, from a customer point of view, is go onto the transit app and see your bus in real time instead of just a, a schedule. Uh, you're going to see everything happening in real time. And it'll allow you to see how, uh, how many people are on the bus, whether it's full, whether it's about half full, whether there's few on the bus. And uh, one of the things we work with uh, TransNap on is your ability after your ride to grade the ride. You know, you see on Uber or whatnot, you, get, you can have five stars up there and you can choose how you felt the ride went. 
it's a new feature that uh, we have worked with uh, Transit App on to have, and so that's uh, that will be really valuable information. Um, and then last but not least, the APC project, which is your automated passenger counter project. So above the doors, you'll have sensors and it will count the passengers for improved accuracy and then also your NTD reporting. All the hardware is in for that and they've begun uh, getting the hardware installed. So by probably uh, 60 days or so, that will also be up and going with your uh, automated vehicle location uh, package that's just about done. So a lot of good things happening. Your website's under redesign from Celsius, which is the contract you let out a few months ago. And um, I did have, uh, I don't know if, if many of you noticed, but Scotts Valley received a $1.6 million grant. And that is to improve uh, basically the stormwater drainage on uh, at the Metro uh, Transit Center there in Scotts Valley. So we've got porous concrete there, and this will allow them to finish the project to where uh, water that comes out as a surface goes into a holding tank underneath and then into the groundwater. And also if it runs off, it goes into swales, which then allow it to settle and go into the holding uh, ponds. But uh, when the project's totally completed, it'll allow on an average year the savings of eight to 10 million gallons of water that will go into the stormwater system based on uh, what the Scotts Valley, the city of Scotts Valley has done at that transit center. So great project and uh, congratulations to Scotts Valley and their team. So the big news, right, during the month was uh, the transit inner city capital rail program. And um, Wandamu and uh, John, uh, you know, really worked around the clock on this. And we put together a great team to, to put this package together. It's got diverse partners in it. It had a lot of support, 28 letters of support. Uh, it had, it featured several layer, uh, putting a full court press, writing letters corresponding with uh, CalSTA, which was grading and making the awards on the grant. We had Mayor Montesino communicating with Undersecretary Tolson. It had uh, Supervisor Felipe Hernandez talking about the disadvantaged community and the housing uh, in the grant uh, with CALSA uh, and elected officials. And then uh, Director Koenig actually went to Sacramento and sat down with Undersecretary Tolson and talked about the project. So it was like a beautifully orchestrated application. And so the long story short, I just wanted to go kind of line by line on what it is exactly you received. So um, you received 12 buses that are hydrogen, but as a complement to that part of the grant package, we brought in uh, 15 hydrogen buses that were already funded through various other programs as a match. So in total, you'll order 27 buses uh, that are hydrogen off of this application. So that's about a third of your fleet. And uh, interestingly enough, um, that'll take your total if we receive what's coming up in the near future, which is the LONO application that we've submitted for 12 additional hydrogen buses. That would take your total hydrogen bus count to 39. It'd probably be the largest fleet in the nation of hydrogen buses. Um, so that grant went in just a, a week or two ago, and we'll know in June. Again, we're trying to orchestrate that grant really well so that we have a good chance. You have asked for these buses in prior grant cycles, so you have been moving up in, in, in line to, to get that grant award. Uh, so back to the Church of Grant. Uh, so there's 27 buses basically kind of tied into that grant that are hydrogen. They fully funded a hydrogen fueling station at $11 million, and that comes with also the upgrade on the maintenance facility to be able to, uh, you know, work on a hydrogen bus safely. And it also includes your workforce development. So getting all of your maintenance team trained, uh, there's about $700,000 in the grant for that to take place. A couple of other things, uh, the Watsonville Transit Center was winner in the grant, eight and a half million dollars to the redevelopment of that transit center with our partners. That redevelopment would also include the 60 affordable housing units. 
that was a big deal uh, with the Department of Housing, who actually had a table on Brady and Brand. And uh, as you saw, Deputy Secretary uh, for Housing came in on the Brand Award and wanted to be there. And then um, we just had a couple of other things that I felt were of particular interest to the board, perhaps, and that was that this grant included the funding to put the little boxes on the buses and the behind the scenes software so that you can get on a bus with your credit card or your debit card and simply tap and sit down. And it would also include a uh, day pass accumulator, week pass accumulator if we wanted it, and a month pass accumulator. So if you rode the bus a couple of times by tapping your credit card, uh, it would reach a day pass accumulator amount. Let's just say it's uh, $4. And so each and every time for the rest of the day that you tap on the box with your credit card, it doesn't charge you. It recognizes that you've reached the accumulator amount. So that's gonna be really convenient for folks. It's gonna be really good for speeding up boarding. Uh, those of you who've been on the bus, it's pretty frustrating to watch people fumbling around for, for change and, and whatnot. And then the last thing that uh, John and Wanda packaged into this grant with our uh, engineering teams is on SoCal. On the SoCal corridor, they packaged in some bus stop enhancements. So new bus stops with real-time technology. So when you walk up to the stop, you see how many minutes more until the next bus gets there. And also uh, some platform boarding so that the bus doesn't need to pull into a pullout and get stuck. It literally just pulls over just a hair and passengers board off of a platform and it's there. So the county has been really helpful in working with us on that vision and supporting that vision. So in all, you got a $38.6 million uh, grant award. It's the highest by far of any small operator in the state. Most of the small operators were right around the five, $6 million award. Very comparable to the big agencies like BTA that got 46, right in that neighborhood. So it was an amazing grant award. The grant actually scored the highest in the governor's office and in the uh, Department of Housing's office, and uh, it just rocketed to the top uh, with CalSTA as well, getting up the results. So I just thought, you know what, give yourself a hand. That is an amazing. Uh, That's probably the most positive CEO report I've heard. <laughs> Keep going if you, if you have money. And we could comment uh, the really gold stars is uh, to the top on all of them. But I, I think the comparison of two of them in particular, the, uh, the foresight in working with the Bay of Life and the Monterey Bay Sanctuary and putting this forward and really addressing uh, environmental protection along with public transportation is phenomenal. I, I with the, the positive public comments we're all getting because of this, the, the foresight that Metro had was phenomenal. And then the storm response and to the employees, in particular the bus drivers and everybody else, boy, you put two steps forward, five steps forward in really addressing a crisis and it was very identifiable. And uh, so we had great foresight and we had great response and a lot of other things we've had before, but uh, this was really tremendous. Congratulations to everybody on the staff and to this board too for letting you do it, I guess. But uh, I think you're going to do it anyway. So. <laughs> but thank you very much. I agree with these comments and don't want to descend into the Monday, but I do have two questions. Um, will we have the fueling capacity for these hydrogen buses in place when we get them? Or will it still be a lag? You said the grant includes some money to actually get the fueling facility put together, but is the timing lining up and should we ever do how to make it The buses may come in, some of them may come in just a hair early. We actually, those uh, 12 buses that were fully funded from other funding sources, there was like that nine, they lived with nine different funding sources that added up to them. We actually put them in the queue with the manufacturer uh, a couple of months ago, so they're actually already in the queue. And so these 12 that just got awarded through the TRSA will be on a different queue, so to speak, a different timeline. But the first set of buses may arrive like 30 days before, uh, but the timing's pretty doggone close. The other question, given all the new um, automatic electronic stuff about people hitting in bus, how 
right now and so forth. Do the drivers still have to push a, a button every time, uh, you see, for example, you see a system gets an award for that contract, or is there something automatic that's recognizing the cars, or is that part of it you still have to do? You know, for now, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but for now, I think they're Margo. For now, it, it's still manual, um, but it will be a great reconciliation process, right, between what's manual and what the automation sure. counters. No, I'm not complaining about it. I just understand, but I just was curious yeah. if it included that feature. And that would have to be some, your student cards in the vicinity of something in your pocket or whatever. We're, we're not quite going to get it. Yeah, I think, I think we'll take a look at it because you could look at the on off by SOP. And so you can really start to dial in. It would be the student that would get on in a place that wasn't on the campus that you would need to identify as a student still. Uh, it, that technology has the capacity to do. Um, but with that, uh, hopefully with that technology, we're able to do uh, boardings and alightings from both doors on the buses to speed up boarding and alighting uh, because we'll have good accurate accounts coming from the PC system. Um, thank you for your report. A lot of good, a lot of good stuff in there. Um, I really appreciate the whole credit card system that's coming in. I was just in New York over the weekend. That's why I wasn't there on Monday. And uh, when I was getting on the subway, all I had to do was use my credit card. And then after the 12th ride, it was free for the rest of the week. So I was going to come back and be like, oh, why can't we do something like that? And here we are. You know, it's like, I, I thought that it's really great that we're, you know, moving along with um, the rest of the country. Um, I wrote bus stops before you even talked about them. Um, you know, I we have a lot of the old bus stops up there still, so it sounds like I'd like to be part of that conversation when we move forward. Um, I think that maybe the North County and South County have a little bit different views. Um, I think we're probably okay with like more digital if that was something we could, you know, advertising. I know this conversation happened a while ago and some people didn't want the digital, but you know, in the city of Watson, we just passed, um, we're doing a big investment for our community. And something that we did do is we're we're putting up two huge digital screens. One as you enter the city, and then one is going to be placed somewhere else. Um, you know, talking about events and other kind of stuff. So, um, and a lot of cities are doing that now. So that's something that I think that we can that we would probably be agreeable to down in South County. Um, but definitely moving upgrading those those bus stops because some of them are still the old wooden from the 1970s or whenever they were built. So um, I, that's some so. I'd like to be part of that conversation, or I'm sure everybody, you know, would like to be part of that conversation when we do it. Um, the buses, this is great. I know this is something that we, you know, I've been on, some of them have been here since 2014, and we've had, a, we've seen a lot of um, growing pains, uh, you know, trying to get to this point today. Uh, we just said this in the city of Watsonville as well. We are now in a positive place where we can be doing these great things, getting these great things, and, and so that's really exciting to see that the um the infrastructure that's being improved um uh, da, 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 da. um maybe a further conversation on you know services um uh, kind of like so i'd like to know more about like what's the future of the 91 x or if there's no future for it what does that look like uh getting our you know our our, our community to um you know to the north part especially like cabrillo and um if that's ever going to happen again uh Finally, and I'm in I have, my position here is also to report back what I hear back from the city of Watsonville and the community members that are in there. So, um, you know, a lot of times it's not my position, um, but in this situation, uh, we are really excited about the the money that's coming to the Watsonville Transit Center. Um, a lot of people have been really um, speaking positive about it. I think people had a concern wondering why it was not in Watsonville when um, it, it made it more look like it was at the Santa Cruz. Um, uh, a metro center, um, even if you read the articles in some of the papers, it's, it looked like it was going towards that center and then the Watsonville Transit Center. And this is really something that, you know, should be highlighted in our, in our community. So um, I don't know if there's something special we could do to, you know, come down to Watsonville. I know some of you, would be nice to get you down there um, and do something, um, you know, with our, with our community members, maybe get some of our, um, you know, stakeholders and people like that involved um, because we the ceremony didn't seem like it was like oh well here what's going to be half million but it wasn't reported that way um, those of us if i didn't know after i just read the paper 
it would have looked like it was going to the Santa Cruz um, Transit Center, which I also do support. So, um, but you know, wants a little support. So, I don't know how who made that decision, but um, in the future, I think that it'd be it'd be nice to highlight Watsonville and in Watsonville, especially since we just had the floods. I mean, this is a community that's been really ravaged, just in Pajaro and um, in Watsonville. So, um, it'd be nice to get a spotlight. Yeah. Just add on to the kudos, it's kind of like Christmas in April in a way, but I also wanted to flag thank you for the news clips piece because in addition to the um, S Transit article, there are numerous other interesting articles in there. I encourage people to take the time to to poke through them and, and read them if you're interested. It was useful. Thank you. Whoever put them together. Thank you. Donna. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for a great report. A few questions. Um, first, uh, building off of uh, Director Dutra's bus stop uh, question, the note, um, a little more specificity on that. Is that going to be, I know we're going to like break ground uh, with the county on SoCal Drive uh, between uh, what, Harbor High School there and State Park this summer. So is it just going to be the um, the digital displays on shelters in that area, and then the in-lane bus boardings like south of State Park Drive for the next department, or what? I can answer that. So we're gonna, through the reimagined metro process and our other SoCal Rapids, we'll identify the corridor, but it'll be some combination of like the Freedom the Airport in Watsonville, um, and Aptos via SoCal, and then and a small capital road in Santa Cruz. The, the, the grant funded 38 bus stop improvements. The county project on SoCal is largely repaving and restriping. It's not curb, not curb work, some sidewalk improvements. Oh, okay. Good chunk of sidewalk like improvements. Forward, you know, curb, it's, great. It's good chunk of sidewalk improvements, <laughs> uh, but not a lot of work around the bus stops. Okay. So we'll come in after with the boarding platforms on top of them. Um, with the AVL automatic vehicle locators, um, devices that are going in, will we also be able to send that to information to Google so that if you look at your ride, you know, on, on Google Maps, it's, it's a you know, bus coming in five minutes. Resounding yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually happening right now. Okay. GTFS yeah. RT is a thing. So, yeah. multiple ways to win. So, see, pass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and final question is, who actually owns the Scotts Valley Metro Center? Is that us as an agency, or is it the city of Scotts Valley? So um, it's a two and a half acre parcel. And my understanding is the city owns a portion of it, but the majority of the parcel is owned by Metro. There's some kind of a joint ownership there with the parcel. So I haven't uh, drilled down far enough to find out what the percentages are or how all that got put into place, but they do own a, a they are joint owners of that parcel with us. I'm just asked because I've managed to get some success in putting housing at stations, but I know Scotts Valley is trying to find out when they're going to meet their arena numbers. It might be like what they can do more. Thanks. Thank you. I know Dr. Brown has some comments. I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, um, someone said, I can't remember who said it, uh, the housing was going to be for work for, for Metro workforce. Is that is that something that we're guaranteeing? Earlier in the meeting, one of the, I forgot where I heard that from. The bonding zone. Bonding bonding zone. Yeah. It, it's uh, the, the grant that went in categorized it as affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think our thought was to get with Nick Penn, our partner on it, and start working more with the city on, you know, the, the details. Mm -hmm. uh, it has three bedrooms, two bedrooms, one bedroom. So it's a mix and of 60 housing, housing units. Um, a long story short, I'll, uh, we'll come back. And I think we have a discussion. With the I like that idea. Yeah. On that. You know, uh, to get our bed, uh, to, um, I know this has been a conversation when a lot of housing does come up because I'm always like, teachers need to get housing. They, you know, we have, we've had this conversation. They get, they don't make enough, and then they make too much for you know. So they're 
in a really weird position. Um, but I know that we brought a couple um, uh, new developments into Watsonville where um, we were able to allocate a certain amount to farm workers. So if we're able to do that, I'm wondering if this, if this is something I'd like to, you know, explore. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I was, uh, for some reason, I forgot to answer your previous question. Basically, last Friday, CalSTA called and said, we want to have a media event. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're riding the train to Deardon and then riding the Route 17. We won't have time to go all the way into Watsonville, so because we got to get back to the VTA media event. So it was kind of their, their shot, their call. Um, and what we really did is set up a podium and invite the, the media to their, what was really kind of their, their media event to announce the awards. But I agree that would have been a great spot, Watsonville. Well, we can use some expression. Yeah, yeah. And then the last thing was with the CAD ABL system, since there was some interest in that, I just want to make mention that uh, Isaac and his team were smart enough to work with the uh, vendor. And every one of those buses will have Wi-Fi on it for passengers. So I know that's a big deal. Uh, board member Kiddos Carter had mentioned that uh, in Watsonville with some of the residents there, Wi-Fi was a big deal and it was tough to get. So knowing that each of these buses has Wi-Fi on it, it opened up some opportunities there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to echo, I think, what's already been shared here today, that the CEO report is really a testament to what an impressive agency Metro is. Um, I am proud to tell people that I'm on this board, and I think that that uh, is uh, to credit to um, CEO Michael Tree, to our staff, to our drivers. Um, you've really made this all happen. Congratulations. Uh, again, I'm just so impressed um, by how exceptional this agency is. I'm sitting currently on 13 different boards, commissions, or committees, and we're all doing really good work. Metro is one of the boards that I know that every time I come to this meeting, there's something great that has happened since the last meeting. So again, just congratulations for um, all of these successes. Thank you, and I'll, I'll pick up that thread. Um, I'll say a couple words as well. First of all, the, the grant writers, as you said, it was John and Wanda Moo. Um, just want to acknowledge your work. It's really difficult to articulate uh, the need and also show that we are ready to meet the need with the appropriate resources. I, I know personally how difficult it is to articulate that. So congratulations and thank you for your work on that grant. Um, and as Director Brown said, you know, we, your entire report, you know, this acknowledgement, the uh, grant award, the being on the front page of the magazine, it is a testament to your leadership, to the leadership of the board and the vision, and to the work that um, all the staff members at Metro are doing every day. So we have become uh, relevant and we have become a significant member and partner of the community. And um, when I came into this board two years ago, I don't know that I could have said that with, with, with the confidence that I'm saying it now, that people are noticing us, people are talking about us, and um, they're intrigued and interested. So thank you everyone for the work. And I think that that's maybe the end of our meeting, unless there's any other, oh no, I'm sorry, we go to oral communication or public comment for CEO report. Is there anyone online? No, is there anyone here? Okay, well, I think with that is the end of our meeting. So um, our next meeting is Friday, May 9th, 19th, excuse me, Friday, May 19th, here at the Metro Admin offices. And we will see you in a month. We'll see what happens in the next month. There's a lot happening in the last four weeks. So <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks for being here. <laughs>